In this exercise, we're going to learn how to panel using cross-sections. Simple paneling, using the Panel Complete Mesh tool, is convenient and easy to do. We'll demonstrate using this high par that I created earlier in Rhino. We'll simply go to the options under Panel Complete Mesh, specify the number of panels we want. For this example, we'll use eight panels. Click OK, select the mesh, and run the tool. When we use simple paneling, however, the panel size is dictated by the program, and it can only make numbers of panels that fit evenly into the mesh. Furthermore, the panel seams are always curved, like the mesh, which can cause difficulties during panel construction. To achieve more paneling versatility and control, we panel by making cross-sections. Using cross-sections allows us to customize the size of our panels, and it results in straighter seams. In order to demonstrate how to do this, I'm going to first return to top view and then I'm going to switch over to a copy of our original high par right down here which I created earlier. As you can see, I've drawn eight horizontal lines across the mesh, six in the middle and two across the ends. These blue lines show where we want our cross sections to be and they can of course be drawn differently in order to get different sized cross sections. Now we're going to run the cross-sections tool, which is going to convert these lines into 3D polylines inserted into the mesh, creating seven cross-sections. Let's go to the options. Since we not only have our six lines going across the middle of the mesh, but we also have two lines going across the edges of the mesh, we want to be sure and select the option to use the mesh edge as a cross-section. Click OK. And before we run the tool, we're going to make a copy of this model because we'll need to come back to it later. So let's just put that right here. Now we'll select the mesh and all eight lines and run the tool. This gives us a series of black cross-section polys that include the mesh edges. If we look at them in 3D, we can see how they follow the shape of the mesh. Let's now go ahead and delete our original lines, leaving just the mesh and the cross sections. And now we'll try some paneling. Impanel can panel directly from the 3D polys using the Panel Between Polylines tool. In the paneling options, set this to use a pair of polylines. Now we'll select a pair of polylines. Let's specify that we are selecting the curve, not the mesh. And then we'll run the tool. This will panel the mesh between the polylines. The resulting panels, however, are going to be a flat approximation to the curved surface of the mesh. Let's do just one more here. As you can see, these panels have straight ends. If we want to change this and give the ends of the panels more curvature that will better reflect the real shape of the mesh, then we'll return to our original mesh with our eight blue lines right here. And we'll run the cross-section tool again, but this time we'll do something a little different. First, let's go to the cross-section options. And this time we're going to specify three extra cross-sections. Click OK, select all eight lines as well as the mesh, and run the tool again. Now I'm going to delete our original eight lines and our original mesh, leaving just the cross-section polys. We can panel these as before, or we can select the entire set and panel them all at once, using the Panel Between Polylines tool, set to Panel Color Marked Polylines. This time, because we have more cross-sections, the ends of the panels are curved and the panel is shaped to fit through all of the extra cross-sections as well. Of course, whenever you're paneling, be sure to keep an eye on the shear strain, which can be found in the in-panel text window. With a different set of cut lines, the mesh can be paneled in a different direction. We could, for example, make diagonal cross-sections. When we run the cross-section tool on this mesh, we get diagonal polys, which we can panel as before, 
using the panel a set of color marked polylines. Note that when we do this, a small triangle will probably be left off at the far corner, but this will not generally be a problem during panel construction. We're now finished with our exercise, and we've learned how paneling with cross sections can help us panel with much more control and versatility.